This is the Transportation TV News Update. I'm Tony Dorsey reporting. Lawmakers in both the House and Senate turned their attention to the pending highway trust fund crisis. On Thursday, California Democratic Senator Barbara Boxer, chair of the Environment and Public Works Committee, was joined by AASHTO Executive Director Bud Wright and CEOs from four other leading business, labor, and transportation trade groups at a news conference to address the issue. Simply put, when you're talking about three million jobs and you're talking about the Highway Trust Fund not being able to commit to one new project, uh, you're talking about uh, the economy of our nation being at stake. So today we're here sounding a wake-up call. I don't want to wait till, you know, midnight. <laughs> I, I want to get ready for this battle. Boxer said, when the Moving Ahead for Progress in the 21st Century Act expires, September 2014, the Highway Trust Fund is expected to experience a severe shortfall. We need to help the American public understand just how important investment in our surface transportation program is and just how vital the federal program is to that investment. What we need is to identify a sustainable, long-term source of revenue for the Highway Trust Fund to move forward and keep this most important program vitally important to all of us every day, moving ahead in a way that will enable us to create jobs and improve the quality of life for all Americans. The impact of the projected insolvency of the Highway Trust Fund may already be affecting some state departments of transportation, according to Polly Trottenberg, Under Secretary for Policy at the U.S. Department of Transportation. Trottenberg testified at a hearing on Tuesday before the House Transportation Highways and Transit Subcommittee. This is one thing that we've often talked about. States need to take a long time to plan these projects. Big ones can take many years. And I, I do know that some states are starting to look at what their long-term, you know, list of projects is and think about, well, if the, you know, if we start to have a funding shortfall, what might we postpone? The Highway Trust Fund is made up of two accounts, one for highways and the other for mass transit. Its primary source of revenue is an 18.4 cents a gallon excise tax on gasoline and other motor fuel taxes. According to Kim Cawley, chief of the Cost Estimates Unit at the Congressional Budget Office, spending from the Highway Trust Fund has generally outpaced revenues since 2000. And over the past five years, Congress has transferred a total of $41 billion from the General Fund to the Highway Trust Fund just to keep it solvent. Total transfers are scheduled to grow to almost $53 billion by the end of FY 2014, when MAP 21 expires. I think those two amounts, $50 billion in spending and $40 billion in, in receipts, illustrate why continuing on the current path of trust fund spending and revenues is unsustainable. CBL's projections indicate that in 2015, the trust fund will have insufficient amounts to meet all of its obligations. That means at some point in 2015, the Department of Transportation will be unable to reimburse states for all of the federal highway and mass transit expenses that they have already incurred. USDOT estimates that without additional revenues, the highway account will end fiscal year 2014 with a cash balance of just $4.6 billion. The mass transit account will fall to just $300 million. Although the exact response would be dependent on the specific situation, in the case of a shortfall, the Federal Highway Administration would implement established cash management procedures. Federal highways would only be, ever to be able to cover some fraction of state DOT reimbursement requests, and that would clearly affect states' abilities to invest in infrastructure, including critical safety and state of good repair projects. Likewise, the Federal Transit Administration would have to implement cash management procedures that would slow down payments to grantees in order to stretch out the available cash on hand. Many of the Federal Transit Administration's 1,300 rural transit providers would be especially devastated by a shortfall in funding. What's the solution? To avoid the, the projected shortfall we see in 2015, the Congress could eliminate all highway and mass transit spending in 2015 or raise the tax on motor fuels by about 10 cents per gallon, or transfer about $15 billion from the general fund to the Highway Trust Fund. How will Congress decide to solve the Highway Trust Fund crisis? We'll keep you posted. In other news, the Technology Implementation Group, or TIG, UPlan2 team, 
held its first meeting at Ashto headquarters this week. Uplan is a leading-edge technology which combines and displays real-time information from data banks both inside and outside of transportation agencies in the form of maps. These multi-layered displays make it easy to see the many ways a proposed transportation project will interface with its surrounding area. Fourteen state DOTs have adopted some form of the Uplan technology, which is given to states free of charge through the Ashto TIG program. The Uplan two team leaders are from state DOTs in North Carolina, Minnesota, and Pennsylvania. Their task over the next nine months will be to bring new state DOTs into the program. We really want to build on the momentum, number one, that was had with, with TIG-1, so get the technology out there um, in terms of, of showing other DOTs, presenting to them, showing what, what they can do, what they can accomplish, and really how easy and inexpensive it can be. To learn more about the program, go to the Ashto TIG website at tig.transportation.org. That's the Transportation TV News Update. Thanks for watching.